welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I'm your host, D-Boss. And if you get your device, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, D-Boss Networks. And also, the guests that come on, subscribe to the channel, go like their music, buy their music, buy their brands, or whichever they have on. But I have a very special guest on here today, and he is a rising artist. He's just dropping a new single. And we're going to find out a lot about him. And it's his name is Griff Galaxy. Hi, D-Boss. How's it going? I'm okay. I like the name. I like the name. Griff, that is your name, right? Yep, Griff. Exactly. And, and Galaxy is actually the nickname. So how did you come up with who, who gave you that? You did? Well, it's kind of interesting. A couple of people that I worked with in the music industry they say they said things like, oh, your music is out of this world or your sound is out of this world. So we kind of came up with the idea of Galaxy, just like another planet, a different world, right? So I came up with the name Galaxy and Mr. Skrills actually came up with the spelling of Galaxy to make it stand out a little bit from the Galaxy phone, for example. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I like it. It, it. it really, you could go GG. I'm a G and a G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people call me that too. People call me also GG as well. So I, I, I respond to GG also. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> a lot, a lot, you don't respond to nothing else. Just GG and Griff Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. So exactly. can you tell everybody where you come from, Griff? Yeah, absolutely. So i um, born and raised in Toronto, Canada. Uh, so I've been here my whole life. And, you know, background is actually West African from Ghana. So what? my parents, yeah, yeah. So, you know, my parents immigrated to Canada like many years ago. And, you know, I got like three older brothers and, you know, we all just grew up here just learning the Canadian way. So, yeah. <laughs> so have you been back to your family's home? Um, The last time it was a long time ago. It was oh, in okay. two, 2010. Okay. But the lifestyle there is so different, right? It's not the hustle and bustle as it is in the city of Toronto, right? Like people are on a rush, go, go, go. Whereas there, it's very laid back. People are very chilled, going to where they need to go. There's no rush, no panic, right? So it's very relaxing. And the people there are very friendly as well, too. So it was a great experience. I definitely want to go back. Oh, well. With the, with the album that you're doing and all the stuff you're doing, you may be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm actually thinking of going uh, during Christmas, like of this year, because Christmas it's lit. Like yeah, Ghana is like just party town and people are having a good time during the holidays. So that's actually the best time to go to Ghana is during Christmas. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. And I, I have some friends from Nigeria. They say they have a blast. Oh, Christmas, amazing. There's nothing like, like up here exactly they christmas is like another level up there like compared to here here we're just freezing <laughs> you know going shopping here and there and just cold the whole entire time right like you know how canadian weather is it's i can never get used to it no it's cold <laughs> yep. exactly so, there's a little secret saying that before you came an artist an r&b artist that you are were a hip-hop artist Yes, yes, so tell exactly. Us about that. What inspired you to do that? Yeah, it's actually an interesting story. So when I started as a hip hop artist, I went by a different stage name. Actually, I went by DCG, and oh. yeah, and DCG actually stood for Dark Chocolate Griff. <laughs> right. So did that, you that, come up with that? Did you come up with that name, or somebody gave it to you? Um, a couple of people used to call me Dark Chocolate, and I just added the G at the end, right? Okay. So I, I got that name in uh, high school, right? Okay. Uh, so, you know, just because of my complexion and a lot of the ladies said I was sweet. So, you know, that that that's how like the name that came about. <laughs> wow. So yeah. when you started hip, did you write your own lyrics? Yeah, I've actually always written my own lyrics. Um, you know, I've never worked with any um, co-writers. Only if I was, like, collaborating with them, I would get them to write their own verses, and then we kind of combine everything together. But I've always wrote my own lyrics. And, you know, back when I was a rapper as DCG, during that time, I was, you know, just – I didn't know much about the industry. I was just trying to find my way. And, 
you know, I didn't have much commercial success back then because, you know, being an indie artist, it's very hard to actually stand out and make a name for yourself. And back then I didn't really understand the business that well. So I didn't do as well as I planned, but the great news from that experience, um, I eventually was able to get um, the Grammy ballot uh, for some of my songs. Wow. And yeah, you know, so that was a good experience. The only thing is I didn't get Grammy nominated. I didn't okay. get enough votes to get in the nominations, but it was nice that I was actually on the ballot. So if I would have got enough votes, it would have led to the Grammy nominations, which unfortunately it didn't. And that's when I decided to take a step back, kind of oh, figure things you out. I got discouraged. Yeah, but I guess you could say that exactly. <laughs> there was a bit of discouragement. And then also dealing with people who made promises. And as indie artists as well, you sometimes get scammed and taken advantage of, right? Because you're so passionate about your craft and wanting to get out there and, you know, you do whatever it takes to get out there. And a lot of people out there, unfortunately, take advantage of that just so they can get ahead financially. And, and at least the indie artists, you know, broke, upset, not trusting many people, right? So because that's- Because they take advantage because you don't know the craft. Like you didn't really study what's, what do you, what do you need in the back end to be an artist? right? Exactly. And, and that's where I got burnt. Right. And that's when I decided, okay, I'm just going to take a break from the music business for a little bit, just focus on the job grind nine to five corporate career and just doing that. And I was doing that for a while. And then, you know, it was maybe a good five, maybe five years where I was still kind of dabbling in music a little, little bit. I wasn't doing anything too serious, but it wasn't until like the pandemic hit that's where I realized like, you know, music has always been a part of me. And that's when I started to get back into it slowly. So that's when you start to go want to learn more, right? Did exactly. Learn? Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I want to learn more about the business. Like first I just started writing again, because as you know, during the pandemic and the way things have been in uh, Canada in general, we had like a couple of lockdowns. I know people are fed up with those lockdowns mm -hmm. now. Um, so during the lockdown, it gave me a lot of time to reflect, figure out things, right? Like what I want to do, um, you know, what direction do I want to go in life? And, you know, I found music was something that got me through those depressing times. And that's when Griff Galaxy actually was born. Just March of uh, this <laughs> 2020, that's when I reinvented. March 2020, myself. oh my gosh, they really brand spanking come back out, a comeback. Exactly. <laughs> so that was when I decided to make that transition because when my mother was alive, uh, God rest her soul, she she always wanted me to get into singing. And I was like, no, mom, I'm a rapper. That's all I do is rap. I, I'm not a singer. I don't have a singing voice. She would try to get me to go to choir practice with her. All, all, <laughs> everybody start for choir practice, but they end up out, out of it. Yep. <laughs> it's so true. Right. And and that was what came to my mind as well. I'm like, because I've always been a person who liked to experiment with my music. I said, hey, maybe, you know, now that I'm rebranding myself, maybe I should try singing a little bit. And since then, just the amazing uh, feedback I've been getting and just the support and just the growth, just from that making that one decision to switch from strictly rap into singing. So I, I'm, I'm still blown away by it, to be honest, because I never thought in a million years I would, I would be doing a bit of pop r&b kind of record so so what did, did you go take some um did you go for lessons or singing lessons and stuff or you just you know what's yeah. interesting um i actually didn't take singing lessons right i it was almost like self-taught like i've always been pretty decent in coming up with harmonies but you know it was self-taught but i feel like singing lessons will definitely take me to even another level because mm -hmm. even my engineer said like you're a raw talent right he's like if you're gonna take singing lessons that's gonna really elevate you to another level right so it's just on the whim i'm like okay let me try something here and you know it actually worked out better than i imagined to be honest because i never thought i could actually potentially be able to sing and a lot of people gave me good feedback. Like there's this actual um, artist named Jenna Nation and another girl named Jadis. They're actually R&B singers. And they were saying to me, you need to sing more when I used to send them my stuff because I wanted an expert's opinion because I didn't know what I was doing singing wise, right? So, 
Um, and the feedback they gave was amazing. They were just like, wow, you need to start singing more. Like your singing is actually bad, a little bit better than your rapping, a little more polished. So that's where the transition came because I was like, should I do a bit of both? Uh, should I go? I was kind of going back and forth and I just decided to stick with the singing and do a full album of just all singing. Right. So it's been a great experience so far. So can you sing us a little something? Yeah, if you guys want to hear uh, yes. a little, <laughs> yeah, I a sort of lost my voice. When we talk about the album, but we want to hear about since it's singing, this transition from hip hop to R and B. I don't know what <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I sort of lost my voice during um, my actual singing voice during COVID, but I'm happy to like still yeah, attempt it. something. We right? know, well, no, you, you definitely you don't have to be perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about sunrise? What about rain? They don't even know about us. Forget what they say. Sorry, my voice is a little bit dried out a little bit. Okay. Like, uh, it's like died out today. <laughs> I kind of lost my voice during COVID, but it's slowly coming back. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's okay. But at least if you sing, at least we know the transition. So when you when you rap, did, did you was your rap had a lot of cursing in it, or was it just uh, was it clean or what? Uh, my rap was actually pretty pretty clean, right? Like, um, yeah, it's funny because when I was DCG, it was a balance of like very little bit cursing and also positive lyrics, right? Yeah. So that that was a good transition, right? Like just to. Because I, my nieces, right, are young. I wanted them to be able to play my music without having to worry about skipping the song. So <laughs> that was important Not to me. So, yeah. <laughs> so that, that was always something I, I thought about when creating my music that I wanted to like skip the music, uh, like not for them to skip the music, just to actually hear it out and be able to play the whole song without having to run to the, you know, uh, track to change it. <laughs> and stop it. <laughs> All right. So um so what so you, tell us about okay your facts over feeling the album. Yes. What All made right. you want to do that one? Yeah, so that album Facts Over Feelings, it's quite interesting actually because during the pandemic, um, you know how there was so much going on, right, with everything with Floyd, uh, Black Lives Matter, and mm -hmm. you know, just a lot of different things going on and a lot of people have been going through a lot of stress right and you know stress is something that we feel all the time when something doesn't go your way and right. facts are basically things that you really can't control right where the facts are the facts right like for example living in Canada it's cold I, I can't can't really control that but I can actually control my attitude which is my feelings right okay. so that's where the whole concept came from because during the this current time I was thinking a lot about actions and attitudes. So those are like two things that I like to focus on what I can control. So that's where this album came into play, where it's your, the facts over your feelings, right? Because when you have a lot of feelings, sometimes you don't always make the right decisions when you're thinking emotionally, mm -hmm. like your feelings are in a way schizophrenic, right? Um, you know what I mean? Like when you're, you're, sometimes you're very happy and excited and then sometimes you're upset, right? So you cannot rely on your feelings to make decisions. So that's where facts come into play, where you start to think logically to make a decision. And I thought this album title, Facts Over Feelings, was a good transition because I had a lot of different feelings about even doing a singing album because first not being a singer to begin with, and being just a hip hop artist. So there's where my feelings were. Well, the facts was, hey, you know, I got the potential. If I continue to work on it, it'll improve and get better. So it kind of tied in with the album title. So that was how wow. the whole, whole thing And how came. many songs does it have on it? It has quite a lot of songs, actually. It was Woo! 21 songs. Um, and the reason 21? why, actually, <laughs> yeah, 21. <laughs> yeah. I was say 14 or so, 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's interesting? <laughs> like, generally, people usually have albums, like, from 10 maybe to 15 songs. Mm -hmm. But 21 was actually symbolizes when I actually started the, in the music industry because I started as a producer as well. And oh. um, what ended up happening is... Um, you know, when I started as a producer, um, you know, I transitioned to the rap as a rapper, but 
that was the time I was 21 when I got into it. So I thought 21 would symbolize like a start when I started my journey. So that's how I got to all those songs. Wow. So what's the first song? Okay. So you're dropping the whole, the whole al album AP, you're dropping the whole thing, right? Exactly. That's correct. Okay. So, okay. So what's with the first song that you wrote? What's that one about? Oh yeah. So the first song I actually wrote was called uh, Groove. So Groove is the one I actually just wrote just because it had a nice vibe to it. It had kind of like that funk EDM vibe. And Groove is just about having a good time and enjoying yourself, right? Despite all the things that are going on with COVID and the lockdowns in, in Canada, just to enjoy yourself and have fun. Um, and it talks a little bit about, you know, this guy who's with this girl and, you know, she's giving him a hard time because of just stress and under a lot of pressure. And the guy is just telling her, just unwind and have a good time and enjoy yourself because life is short, right? You got to enjoy yourself when you can. So that's how that first song came into play. Wow. So who would you like to work with that you, that, you know, that you, who would you like to work with that you, you know, you would maybe in the future, if you do a collab or something? Yeah, one person, he, I actually know this person on a personal level. We go back like maybe 16, 17 years. Everybody actually knows who he is. It's actually uh, Drake. Um, yeah, <laughs> Drake. So I, I met him when he was about 17 years old. So that was during the grassy days when he was on the show Grassy. And we actually did a song together. The quality isn't the greatest, but he was one of the guys who featured on the song with myself him my other uh friend promise and nifty we we're all on one song and uh you know i would love to work with him again because i seen how much he's grown as a person and as an artist he's very diverse as well so i feel it would blend very well with with my style so i would love to reunite with him again and do a collab with him if he still remembers me it's been like 16 17 years almost <laughs> Ooh, you, gotta, you gotta look back in the archive <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> so um so when you okay well so when you do your music and stuff so say, has you had anything crazy that happened to you while you were performing or something um something pretty interesting is um uh rest in peace dmx um okay you know he's somebody i looked up to like he's actually one person who got me into rap to begin with back oh. in the day when i used to listen to rap music like his vocals and just how he delivered right he, so you know what was actually interesting he was working on a project where he was promoting independent artists and helping them get their music out there um unfortunately it didn't come to fruition because he did pass uh, uh god rest his soul but i was just blown away when he messaged me right i, I was like is this real i thought it was you know you know how the internet is right certain People you can you can't tell if they're if it's a real person or not, right. and then I, I messaged him. I'm like, is this really you? Like, you know, I was checking his profile. They had about like three million view uh, followers, so I'm like, this can't be real. And then I messaged him. I'm like, are you for real? Because he's like, hey, I'm working with independent artists. You know, I heard some of your stuff because somebody passed my stuff on to oh. DMX right and he's like i think you got what it takes and i was like no way this ain't dmx i typed back to him this ain't dmx and then he was like what that beep you mean you know that was his <laughs> so i'm like okay i get i guess this is dmx because i'm like are you real and he just pretty much said that and i'm like okay mm -hmm. this is dmx yeah, you never know you know a lot of people make these profiles and stuff up so you just never you know you never could know exactly right so i asked him he was kind of like what like kind of almost offended in a way, like you don't really believe it's me type thing. So, but I just had to confirm and it really was him. And, you know, we were working on something like trying to figure things out, the logistics and, you know, everything that happened, That it, it was very uh, devastating, but, you know, it was just crazy because I didn't expect someone at his caliber to reach out to little old Griff in, in Toronto, right? Like I, I just didn't see that. <laughs> a lot of people come from Toronto over here, I tell you. A lot of talent, actually. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, Toronto's on the come up and that's the great thing, right? Like so much gifted artists in, in the city. And I feel like more people are starting to recognize that and focus in the Toronto, 
right? We're like the New York of music in Canada, I, I would say. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people look look to hear for. So what, what, what are you? Okay, you're going to release the album. So what other things would you like to do as an artist that um, that you're looking forward to? You're a new artist, so what would you get into? Like, would you want to get into acting? Would you want to get into um, doing collabs? Which other stuff? Yeah, so yeah, definitely collabs. I always love to work with uh, different talent, not just in the main industry, but even independent talent. So I always love just working with so many talented people. Uh, definitely acting is something that I, well, the last experience I had in that was drama class, like grade 10. So it's so long ago, but I, I wouldn't mind uh, getting into that a little bit, maybe doing more more shows. Um, also working on more projects and album albums and collab and continuing to collab with talented people. So those are like some of the things I also want to be able to be a motivational speaker for those who are just going through a struggle or depression, right? Mm -hmm. To never give up on your dream. Because one of the things is I realized like when following your dreams, there's something I like to call the three P's, which is persistence, patience, and passion. Like I would say that formula has actually helped me because when you're persistent, it shows that you're not giving up, right? You're working towards getting there. And when you're patient, it me means that you have to understand things don't happen overnight. And passion is going to keep you driven, right? Because you love what you do. You're going to keep going. You're not going to want to quit as easy because you're passionate about it. So right. those are some of the things I, I, I would say help, help me during my journey. Well, you're going to have, it's, it's, it's a big journey when you got those 21 songs there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my catalog. <laughs> yeah, my catalog. I probably have like over 300 songs recorded, wow. like from my, I've been doing music for over a little bit over a decade. And I have probably about like at least 300 songs in my catalog stuff where I was like, what was I thinking? And then other songs where I'm like, wow, this could still be released today. So I have a lot of songs in my catalog still. All right. So if people want to book you or anything, where can they reach you at? Yeah, they actually could reach me on a couple of places. So one is Instagram. That's been like my main source, which okay. is Griff Galaxy on Instagram. And then my email is galaxygriff at gmail.com. And Galaxy is spelled, of course, unique, G-A-L-E-double-X-Z-E-E. -E. Wow. Okay, so that's where they can reach. You know, if you book this guy, you know, he's he's good. <laughs> <laughs> we, I can't wait for your new your, when, When's your album dropping? Yeah, so the actual Album, uh, Facts Over Feelings It's actually out right now um, You know, so it's on, on all online platforms at the Moment, so people can actually Go on, even as of today Like dropping today, I wow. guess you could say what Right? Just in time? <laughs> yeah, just in time <laughs> The timing was so perfect <laughs> But anyways, you know what, Griff, this has been great. I'm telling you, oh, you know, I can't, I, I can't wait to hear the album. You said it dropped already, so I'm going to go listen to it. And, uh, you know, I invite you to come back when, Absolutely. you know, let, let us know, you know, how, how it's going, how the album's going. You know, Definitely. I guess you have your marketing person really busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. And um, one thing about the album, I've gotten amazing feedback um, from people and they said almost every song is could be like a top 40 hit. I, I really worked with 20 different producers, nine different artists. So I did things out of the norm, right? So usually when people uh, have an album, they work with maybe two or three different producers, but I work with 20 different ones. So each song sounds different from the other. So it's going to definitely surprise a lot of people well we're gonna well we're gonna be look surprised because you know we'll have and people will have time to listen to your music and work out or whatever in the radio or they're driving or whichever they want to hear it but anyways yeah. griff i do want to talk thank you for coming coming on tonight and talking and telling us all about your um the album and yourself and who you are how you came from hip-hop and you went right into r b singing boy <laughs> wow. yeah, it, it that's, was, it was that's a big change <laughs> definitely a big change and it's definitely outside of my comfort zone and, and i feel that's the way you can actually grow and expand is well, going up the way. envelope you're pushing the envelope yes that's exactly it and yeah i really appreciate you d boss as well for having me on your your show it's been a pleasure uh to be on here so thanks for having me 
All right. Well, thanks, everybody. For